So I figure if the Orthodox Muslims don't like dogs, they hate him. What about Orthodox Jews? So I asked. It turns out Orthodox Jews like dogs. And here's the reason why, I, according to the story I was told. In the ancient days, boys and girls, the Jewish people were enslaved in Egypt. Whoa, I'm talking a long time ago, way before your grandfather's day. The Jews were slaves in Egypt. And they had hard work. They had to put that straw and mud together and make those bricks. And they had to build those pyramids, whatever. The Egyptians snapped the whip and cracked the whip on them. The Egyptians were the original crackers, in case you don't know it. But So the Jews were the slaves of Egypt. And they were there for a very long period of time. Now, the Egyptians didn't want to guard the Jews day and night. So they had guard dogs. A certain kind of biblical dog was used as a guard dog. Lots of dogs guarded I think it was 600,000 Jews were enslaved, according to the biblical uh, Bible. And they had a lot of dogs watching the 600,000 Jews. So now over time, the Jews were planning to escape in the Exodus, to escape from Egypt. You remember that story, the biblical story? But in order to do so, they had to lay plans for the escape. They didn't just stand up and run out. They were watched by dogs. They were watched by guard dogs. So over time... The Jewish slaves learned to communicate with the dogs. They were kind to them. They fed the meager rations they were given to the dogs they gave the dogs. And they learned to communicate with dogs. I don't have to tell you if you have animals, you can communicate with them somewhat silently even, through kindness, through touch, through innuendo. So the Jews learned to communicate with the dogs. And over time they said to them, look, Fido, here's what's going to happen. Certain day we're going to give you the signal. And we're going to, like, walk out of here. Now, don't get no snapping, no biting. We've been nice to you now. We've given you half our grain. Just, you know, dummy up, lay down, and let us out. All right? That's what happened. So because they talked to the dog, communicated with the dog, the dogs let them leave Egypt, according to the, to the you know, the way I was told the story. And for this to this day, an Orthodox Jewish person who has a dog is told to feed the dog before they feed themselves at a dinner table. It was an amazing story. That's why I don't want to talk about the bailout. You heard that already from the from everybody in the, in the world. They're all geniuses on the bailout. You heard it already. Good. Listen to your favorite talk show host. That's all. I'm going in another direction right now. So I give you story two. One, two ugly incidents today. Man's hatred for man in Obama's garden. You heard about that nasty guy in the restaurant that will remain unnamed who shouldn't serve a dog. He himself is, a, is lower than a dog for behaving that way for a man who was trying to you know, release the dog was tied up in a chain. Who would have, I don't want that guy around my food. I don't think I'm ever going to go in there again, number one. Number two, why dogs are revered by religious Jews. Now, three, I think I'll save for the next hour. Remember I told you how science and God are not mutually exclusive? Many of you were unable or have been unable all your life to accept God because you were trained in science and you think, well, wait a minute. Carbon dating tells us certain things like the strata of the earth. You learn that in, in you know, Earth Science 101. That's if you, you even went to 101. You can see the stratum of the Earth, or you, get, you learn about carbon dating, and you understand that things can be dated to a fairly high degree of accuracy and find out dinosaurs, yeah, X million, Pleistocene, Mycetocene, Eistocene, all aboard. And, of course, then you got the cracker on the other side, the uneducated moron who says, no, 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 evolution's evil. It's the word of the evil man. What they don't understand is that you can believe in evolution or science and God. They're not mutually exclusive. Unfortunately, the, the religious teachers today are ignoramuses, by and large. And they tell so many people lies that God created the whole world, you know, 5,000 years ago, including the dinosaurs, even though they're carbon dated to millions of years ago. Well, no, that's trickery from the evil sciences. Come on, stop it already. Grow up. So I showed you on this show that you can believe in evolution and God, because I do. Well, how? Because when it says God created the, the earth and the, the world in seven days, seven days to you is one thing. Isn't seven days different to a dog? Like seven minutes to a dog is like seven hours to you. You go out of the house, they think you were gone. They go crazy. I said, I just have seven minutes? I took the garbage out. What are you jumping for, Teddy? Okay, so to you, seven days is seven days. To God, seven days could be 70 million years or 700 million years, right? That's one explanation that gives you the capacity to understand that can be a, you can believe in science and God. They're not mutually exclusive, but there's another one. I told that story last night 
to a crowd. I was invited to a um, dinner, Jewish dinner, in the Hilton Hotel, a beautiful dinner. And it was largely filled with young Israelis. And I was very impressed with their intelligence. Remember, they're listening to me in my little talk, and I'm speaking in English, and they're listening to me and in, 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 in translating it into Hebrew, their native language. And yet they understood every innuendo, more so than John McCain can, apparently. And so I tell this story about how science and God are not mutually exclusive. And afterwards, a young lady comes up to me with her, I guess, paramour, and she says to me, thank you for that story. Uh, they didn't know who I was. They never heard of the show because they're from another country. I guess they were visiting. And she said, that really helps me now understand how I can believe in God and science. But she said, I must tell you that I had a professor in Israel who explained how you can believe in science and God through another set of understanding. I said, what's that? She said, listen carefully what he said. She said, my professor said that God created and destroyed the earth many times. I said, oh, my God. Wow, that's brilliant. That, that was like a satori, as the Japanese say, an instant insight. What do you mean God created the earth? See what, it, what she said to me? In other words, if you find that the dinosaur's bones can be carbon dated to 20, 30, 40, 50, 700 million years ago, whatever it may be, depending upon the Iocene that it may be, the Pleistocene, Miocene, Iocene, whatever that uh, particular animal was that lived at that time, it could be that the earth was created all at once at that time by God with Adam and Eve, okay? And then God didn't like the way Adam and Eve went, so bingo, the whole earth got knocked, you know, destroyed. Then he did this many times, till now we're in this incarnation, where 5,000 years ago, in fact, he did create the world again. You see what I'm saying? For us. Now you come to what we're doing to this earth right now, how we're behaving to each other. The degeneracy on this planet is exemplified by San Francisco, where people walk around naked and beat each other in cages with whips in public. The police and the city transvestites do nothing. God's really mad. He's so mad that we're on the verge of losing this earth again, is how I see it. It really scared me when she said that to me because I said, instantly understood she was right. That explains it all for me. You get what I just said to you, God and science? And I think that that's as important as the bailout because we're living in the end of times. When you see an oligarch, an oligarchy like this, where they're saying to us, although we cause the crash with our criminality, we want you to give us a trillion dollars. Then today we wake up and John McCain, who posed yesterday as a populist, he says, well, listen to the, he says, the Treasury could just start buying up those mortgages right now without congressional authority to begin stabilizing the situation. And I said, oh, my God, if ever, if ever I was going to vote for this man, unless this idiot does a pop wheelie and goes 180, it is over for me and him. I'll be right back. Savage.